It's the second season of the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. Jen and Angela are two moms raised on Disney magic, figuring out parenthood one day, one milestone, and sometimes one meltdown at a time. Thanks for listening and enjoy this week's new episode. Really glad that I grabbed a brick of Parmesan cheese and started eating it right before we started recording. I kind of feel like everyone should do that before recording a podcast. Like I can see maybe eating like a brick of sharp cheddar, maybe. Yeah. Pepper. I can't think. Pepper Jack? Pepper Jack, right. Sure. But, you know, a brick of Parmesan, interesting choice. It's very salty, a little dry, but. And do you just like bite into the whole hunk of it? Do you have a cheese slicer there? What, what's going on? So I love that you asked me about cheese. (laughs) Perfect thing to start that (laughs) off with. (laughs) I like to grab a potato peeler. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I like to peel little slices into my salad or whatever I'm currently eating. Yeah. Or put the slices on like a cracker. Well, that was going to be my next question, but right now I think you only have the hunk. Do you not? (laughs) It just looked really appetizing to me when I went downstairs. Like, I'm like, you know what? This is for me. And then I just, I just broke off a piece. So you're just breaking off pieces. Apparently today that was. Okay. Fair enough. What type of cracker do you prefer when enjoying the cheese? Okay. So there's this new cracker that I found at Target, which I first found at Trader Joe's. My mother-in-law, when she comes to visit, she always brings us goodies from Trader Joe's because ours is just like too, it's just too far to be bothered with. So she will come up and bring us things. And so the latest was these crackers and they're square and they have like garlic in it and caraway seeds and poppy seeds and like onion I know those powder. Crackers, are they in the orange box from Trader Joe's when they're they're, from there? they're like orange or red and I can't yeah, yeah. remember um but at Target they have the same thing and they're in a blue box a blue box and they're good and gather oh. so that is delicious with like a um port wine cheese oh or just like any kind of cheese honestly I am yeah. a huge cheese and cracker connoisseur yes um honestly grew up just being a cheese fiend to the point where my grandma would call me mouse so sure and yeah. ever wants to talk cheese I know that I'm getting like a lot of interest on this topic I think you are because I think a lot of people like cheese I okay. enjoy cheese and crackers for show sure. I recently having gone gluten-free dairy-free uh haven't been enjoying that as much Horrible. but Ugh. Frank will tell you that last time we were in Disney which was when we met January 2020 uh we went to baseline and at baseline, we ordered shout out to Brandy and Dave, Dave specifically, a charcuter, charcuter, what? Charcuterie. Charcuterie. Char- charcuterie. Charcuterie. Not charcuterie. Char- I feel like that's not how you say it. Wait. <laughs> charcuterie? Sh- charcuterie? Charcuterie. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Oh, no. I got it. Okay, wait. And there's a, there's a thing next to it. Charcuterie. Oh, you're right. Charcuterie. Charcuterie. Is the R silent? Charcuterie. <laughs> I don't know if we're keeping any of this in, but okay. Anyway, I, I so don't want to brag, but I say that right. <laughs> Absolutely, you do. It's a shock that the New Yorker does not. So we had one of those <laughs> at Baseline, and, and it was the day we were also up at like 4 30 a.m. for Galaxy's Edge. This was, I say it felt like three o'clock in the afternoon. Frank is like, it was like 1231. I don't know what time of day, but I was, I was tapping out <laughs> at baseline tap house. Um, I was tapping out and exhausted. And like, they had a big pretzel, like a soft pretzel with some oh cheese and stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like all I want. All I want is this pretzel right now. And he was getting very insulted and annoyed with me that I wasn't enjoying the fancy cheeses. He's like, do you not like these cheeses? I'm like. No, I do. I just like, I don't feel like it. He's like, what? What do you, you're not going to eat it? And then he would like leave me certain ones that I didn't even like try just because. And he's like, well, 
have some of that. He was, but he was like, honestly, kind of annoyed that I didn't <laughs> partake in certain cheeses. And I'm like, I just wasn't in the mood. He's brought it up since. I'm like, you okay. need to stop being insulted about this. It, you didn't make it. And I just wasn't in the mood for it. <laughs> the chef is not watching, but I understand. Like, okay, first of all, I have not been to Baseline Tap House. Oh, it's I've, a good find. I think. I've always wanted to go. Yeah. I really have. And it's not like it's the pinnacle of Disney dining. I just right. really love small plates. I yes. love appetizers. Yeah. And when you mix it with like dips. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. melted cheese, like hot mustard with like, okay. Also, just since we're talking about hot pretzels, when Michael and I went, when he came with me for a work trip, it was the Rise of the Resistance opening. Um, We went to Jack Lindsay's D- at Disney Springs. I legit was about to say, I also enjoyed a delicious pretzel on that trip. At yes! <laughs> <laughs> they, they display the pretzel on this metal wire airplane yes. and then they give you two dips. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's like one is like a white cheese. I don't know if it's like a queso or whatever. Uh-huh. And then a mustard. Yes. Oh, like a seedy mustard. So good. Oh my gosh. Best yeah. pretzel ever. But I need I- to try now the baseline. Yes, I basically just enjoyed soft pretzels that whole trip, which is great because I'll probably never be able to have it again. But I, it was so, they were just so good. I feel like Jack Lindsay's was probably a little bit better, but it could also be the tiredness playing mm-hmm. into it for, so I would have to go back to baseline. But yeah, that's you so know, funny that you said that. I do think that we need to like maybe put this to the test when we do our research trip. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you need to like some, like start some like reintroduction of dairy before this. Right. But the the thing that's going to get me is gluten because now if I have any little bit of gluten, I just go to sleep. You're tired. Um, so that's a problem. Like I, my brain shuts off. I can no longer function or keep my eyes open. So we're going to have to, that's that. a problem. I, you know, you know how this whole like year as in, you know, pandemic year, I've been talking about, oh, I think I'm going to go to Disney and then I keep canceling. You guys, I actually have real life plans to go to Disney. Yes. Like real life plans to the point where I bought a ticket. So what changed my mind? We're still in the thick of a pandemic. Hundreds of thousands of people have died. Like what is the difference between now and then? I mean, the difference is I'm vaccinated. Um, yeah. I work very closely with frontline workers, like to the point where we're less than a foot apart at times. Yeah. Um, we do our best with COVID protocols, but because of the nature of my job, um, I had the opportunity and the privilege to get vaccinated. So um, at the time this recording comes out, I think it'll be like another week and a half before I get my second dose. Um, for those wondering about the vaccine, I got the Pfizer one and my side effects with the first dose was just like extreme fatigue. Like mm-hmm. for those of you who have experience with pregnancy and pregnancy tired, it is very similar to that. Um, with the flu shot, I get an extremely sore arm. Like if you touch me, I scream. With the vaccine, it was a very mild sore arm. Like I could lift up my arm and it kind of hurt, but it's nothing like the flu shot sore arm. And then I had a little bit of a headache, but that also could have been because I didn't sleep well. So, um, you know, I have family members who got the vaccine and had very minimal side effects. And then I had family members who got the second shot and had the chills, the aches and the fever. So every person's going to be different, Mm -hmm. but, um, That was just my experience with the first shot. And I can definitely update you with my experience with the second, if you'd like. Yes. So that is why I feel comfortable going now. I'm going with my cousin and his wife, who also is vaccinated. Um, And I have no idea why they invited me. (laughs) Because you're a guru. I like, like, they have the cutest twins ever, like in the world. And I called them last week and we just did like music group and I just like made goofy noises and sang to them. They're so cute. Um, And it's going to be their five year anniversary. And the last time they went to Disney, you guys, was five years ago. Oh my goodness. So they have missed Pandora. Yeah. They have missed Toy Story Land. They have missed Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Mickey's Runaway Railway, like everything they have missed. It is all going to be new to them. Yeah. 
And, but still, I'm like, why are you inviting me? Like, you have <laughs> twins. You have been so busy. Like, she's a doctor. He's an accountant. Like, they are very busy people. Like, I don't want to get in the way. And they're like, no, it, it'll be fun. And I'm like, fine. But I am staying in a different room. <laughs> so um, right now, I have plans between, like, Old Key West or the Boardwalk. Mm-hmm. Is. So we'll see. We'll see which one I end up going with. And I'm trying to get my husband to go with. Yeah. Although I'll probably just end up ignoring him the whole time. Like I literally said, like I'm doing stuff on certain days. So like, I need you to find something to do on this day that I'm busy. Right. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, like, can I like go to the beach or something? I'm like, I don't care what you do. I just need to be busy. (laughs) And he looked at me like with such joy on his face because he's like my Disney curmudgeon and being dragged around at the parks is kind of his nightmare. Yeah. Like I get a free day in Florida. Yeah. And I'm don't have to go to the parks. Yeah. It's like someone told him it was his birthday all over again. (laughs) I love it. Well, I'm excited for you. Yes. I, it is bittersweet. Like I definitely went through a lot of guilt, like why me and not other people who, you know, are immunosuppressed like my mom, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, it's the order that they were handed out. And, um, you know, I just hope people like my mom and, you know, my in-laws can get it as soon as possible. Yeah. But um, that being said, I am very excited and I have a couple things planned that I don't think I can talk about yet. What? Ooh. I know. You're leaving everyone in suspense. It's not like <laughs> that big of a secret. Like I'm sure if anyone thought about it, they could figure it out. But um I don't want to announce anything yet just in case yeah it doesn't happen um but yeah that's exciting mm-hmm. yay love it love it hashtag Morning. life update <laughs> <laughs> hashtag disney life so now that we've uh, sufficiently covered cheese for a pre-show banter yeah um topic everyone loves <laughs> welcome to the magical mommy podcast i'm angela dahlgren here with my co-host jen snyder hello Last week, we spoke with Lori Berkner. Oh, gosh. If you have kids at all, I'm sure you've heard one of her songs, whether it's We Are the Dinosaurs or The Goldfish or what have you. It was so fun to get to know her and talk with her. And um, if you ever see her on Broadway as Donna from Mamma Mia, just know that I'm probably going to be Sophie. Or at She'll least be right next to her. I will probably <laughs> audition and then not make it, but... <laughs> It was super fun to chat with her and um, yeah, check that out after this episode. Yeah. So exciting. Yes. Also, this episode is sponsored by Parmesan cheese. (laughs) The (gasps) half-eaten one in my jar. I need to get some better material. I'm just not very funny right now. I don't believe Um, that. I think you're always funny. (laughs) Today, we are talking all about gratitude yes attitude of gratitude attitude of gratitude I feel like Jocelyn should be here for this she should be here if you don't follow Jocelyn you need to on Twitter Disney gratitude one drop the e at a one (laughs) check her out um we are just talking about gratitude um that is something that I've really been exploring the past Mm -hmm. year I'd say what about you Jen is that something that's always been there I feel like it comes and goes. I almost feel like it's this underlying thing that I have worked on over time where I do appreciate what I have more than like, oh, I wish things could be a different way or what mm-hmm. if it was, or, you know, like playing the, I, I used to be a big what if mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like way back in the day. So I think I am way more, whether I am vocal about it or not, more appreciative and more and feel the gratitude more than I used to. But then I think, you know, throughout the pandemic, you go through so many ups and downs where you're having good days and bad days and feeling overwhelmed or whatever is going on. And I think those are the times where I have then put myself in check again of like, hold on, let's let's get some positivity flowing again and And gratitude is always a good place to start of remembering the good things. It is. And I have definitely found it to be helpful to have a gratitude journal where Mm -hmm. just every night before bed, I write five things that I'm grateful for. Some people do it in the morning. I know if I do it in the morning, it'll never get done because 
I like to just get as much sleep as possible before I get up. <laughs> um, but that, that has really helped because then I go to bed focusing on the good of that day rather mm -hmm. than like, oh, the kids were so whiny or I have so much to do that I didn't get done today or whatever. Yeah. Plus, as I kind of mentioned, like when you don't feel good or when you don't feel good about yourself, um, you can just get a little more negative, you yeah. know? Migraines yes. make me a little more down in the dumps. Mm -hmm. When you feel, when you don't feel well, you just get a little more like meh. Um, oh, yeah. So it's good to have that to remind you like, no, these are good things that I have in my life. Those kind of positive affirmations and positive mm -hmm. things. I agree with you. And I think that added to my year as well, because I think for a good year and a half, maybe a little bit more that I started feeling like, eh, something's up with me. I don't know what it is. And a hundred doctors later figured out that it's Hashimoto's on top of the hypothyroidism, which causes like pretty much everything I have going on. Mm -hmm. And I've had, I feel like I try to keep it in perspective where some people have absolutely no symptoms and you don't even realize it. And maybe that was me and I didn't know it before I really started feeling it. And some people have way worse symptoms. So I try to keep it in perspective, but there are definitely have been days where I have just felt out of it or extra tired or my whole body hurts or whatever it is, which then translates into mom guilt for me because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not as present. And then, you know, then I just spiral out of control. So I do also feel like, you know, there, there's there been the back and forth of that too, of trying to work to outweigh those days with some better days and some positive thinking and putting things into perspective as well. Isn't perspective everything though? Like, I feel like it can be so easy to lose it too. Like yep. when I was really bad with my anxiety, <laughs> what, like two or three weeks ago, <laughs> I just called my mom and I was so upset. And I'm like, I just, I've lost perspective. I just kind of feel like I'm never going to get a handle on it. And I mm -hmm. don't like feeling this way. I feel like a narcissist. I feel like I'm always talking about it. I'm always making it about me. And I just, I don't want to be like that. I want to be better for myself and for my family. And, and, and sometimes it takes talking to someone to mm -hmm. get perspective. I think a lot of times that's what really helps me is getting perspective. Yeah. Um, I guess another example is like, um, I was getting a lot of migraines like two months ago. Yeah. And again, it was like, why do I have to be so high maintenance with my body? Why do I have to be so high maintenance just to avoid getting a migraine? But then, you know, you kind of, for me, it was a matter of reframing and getting perspective and realizing like me having to be a little more high maintenance is just my new normal, mm -hmm. you know, and I could spend time feeling sorry for myself right? or I could just do it yeah. what I need to do yeah. to feel better, to minimize mm -hmm. migraines and accept that my situation could be a lot worse. Mm -hmm. I can be like my mom and have seven autoimmune diseases. Right. Or, you know, I could have cancer or, mm -hmm. you know, like the coronavirus or whatever. Right. Um, but I don't. And I'm really grateful for that. Right. I also feel like just because things aren't worse, and this is the hard part about perspective mm -hmm. for me, is that it's all relative. It also doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to be upset that I don't feel the way I want to be feeling right now. And Definitely. it's also like trying to keep that into perspective too. Like yep. it is upsetting that my mind wants to do one thing, but my body is literally stopping me. And right. I think it's also hard with things like migraines or anxiety or anything autoimmune related because on the outside, you may not see it. So people look at us or hear us on the podcast or whatever else and are like thinking one thing where I could have been, you know, in pain and napping an entire day. And sometimes I'll hop on a live on YouTube after that. And like, they had no idea that I was pretty miserable most of the day or whatever it is. But I think if, unless you've experienced things like anxiety or migraines or autoimmune things, it is hard to understand it mm -hmm. because it's not a broken leg. It's not, God you forbid, and it. thank God, cancer. You know, where people have more of an understanding of bigger things that they can see in their face or that have a bigger, um, what do I want to say? Not like a bigger presence, but. It's more obvious. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's it's also hard because that plays into your psyche too of like people 
aren't going to understand it. So am I going to feel like I'm just complaining all the time if I talk about it at all? But sometimes you have to talk about it and like, you know, get that out there. No, I agree. And the way I was kind of raised is like, you know, whatever, we'd be driving and someone would cut me off. We'll say it's me. And I'd be like, oh, I can't believe they did that. And my mom or dad would be like, well, you know what? Maybe he's late to pick up his wife to go to her chemo appointment. Like you never, I mean, at the time you're just like, or maybe he's just a jerk, (laughs) you know, but they did that enough that it does make you think, you know, like you never know what someone's going through and it makes you start to put the shoe on the other foot. And then you start to realize how many people in the world can't do that. You know, they're just like, well, no, that person is just a jerk and their mindset Mm -hmm. never, ever changes. Yes. So I'm grateful to my parents for kind of practicing that with me because it does, it makes, it gives me more compassion Yeah. towards people. Yeah. Um, yeah. It I'm does not, help. I'm not sure what did it for me that got me into the mindset of if someone is acting weird or off or maybe blowing up over something or whatever it is that seems out of character for a person. I always, you know, immediately for me, I'm always like, oh my God, I hope I didn't do or say anything to make that person feel that way. Mm -hmm, But I also try to balance that with, I wonder what they're going through because maybe they are going through something that they're not talking to anybody about and they don't know how to deal with whatever they're going through. And this is how it's coming out now. And, And I try to also keep that into perspective as well. But isn't it so easy to take it personally? Oh yeah. I do. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know, who doesn't like someone is just mean to you for no reason or, you know, it's it's like, how do you not take that personal or someone just like gives you a mean look while you're driving? You're like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And, And sometimes like it could be that mean look in a store. And I will think about that for like hours afterwards. Like, why did that person do that? Like, did I like grab something they wanted? And yeah. and again, maybe that's anxiety. Maybe it's me making it too much about me, but you're absolutely right. Like it could very well be because, you know, they got piled with work, right. Or mm-hmm. shift, or they're going to be late to their kid's game. And it's so important to think about the, what else and not yeah. the, well, it obviously has something to do with me because right. I do that all the time. I always think it's me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very much a people pleaser and someone that wants to make sure everyone else is okay mm-hmm. before myself at all times. So if there's any chance that I may have caused something or on the other side, if there's some way I could help, I'm also like, oh my God, should I reach out to that person? Am I going to overstep? Should I try to talk to the, you know, it, it plays that game. But to your point about being in a store, I don't know if you saw my recent tweet, but I had a tweet about it because that was my way to get it out. But over the weekend, I went into, well, now this is two weekends ago from when you're hearing this. Um, It was, I've been trying to stay out of the grocery stores again and trying to have everything delivered, but there was about to be a big snowstorm. There was not really delivery times. And I was like, oh, let's get some stuff. So I ran out to the store one morning and all the arrows on the supermarket floors are like trying to keep traffic going one way or another. Most people don't listen. I try my best to, but also the lines were so long because snow was coming that they were going down into the aisles because you're also trying to distance and do all the things. Mm -hmm. So I am turning down an aisle and this woman who's at the end of the aisle is facing me and I'm trying to maneuver my basket to try to get to the aisle and literally I'm in her view. There's no way I'm not in her view. And so I'm like, excuse me. Okay. And I just keep trying to maneuver and I'm like, excuse me. And then, and then I'm like maneuvering again. And so I end up, I'm like lifting my basket at this point to really try to just get it through the aisle. And it, the, the bar, the handlebar taps her bar so slightly. And she just goes, you could have said, excuse me. And I like, I, just, I was like, I, I did, I did say excuse me. And I'm like, what? but it literally affected me where I was like, but 
what I did say. Excuse me. Why was she so mean to me? Why didn't she hear me? That literally uh, ruin my uh, entire day. I, I was like, I just want to get out of here. I think I'm done. Did I get everything? I got everything. Yeah. I have to get out of here. So then what did I do? I like, then I had to get like one more thing. I go and I like get on a line, but then I got into an aisle. I don't know if you guys have this in your supermarkets or these little robots that go around and clean up the aisles. We have them in this one supermarket, not everywhere. And it's like, so what? it's kind of annoying because it just gets in your way. And the guy behind me is like, just keep going. It'll move if it senses you. I'm like, okay. So, and I'm like trying, but I can't get around the robot. It's like the craziest thing. So in 2021, Jen's complaining about a cleaning <laughs> robot in her supermarket. First and world I'm, problems. And I'm sitting here in like 1995 in Minnesota, like, um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> There's a anyway, robot that cleans for you. But I don't really understand how it works. I have no clue. But anyway, it didn't really get out of my way. So eventually I joined a line. Did you say excuse me to the robot I, too? I didn't. Did it hear you? If I thought it would hear me, I would have. But the guy behind me was like, just keep going. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, just, I oh really God. want to get out of here. <laughs> just, so then I like get on the line and I'm sitting there waiting, but I'm still like shaky from someone snapping at me. Oh. And so I was like, I think I need to tweet about this because it's my only outlet right now. I need a release. <laughs> I get it. Oh, no. But, but a big snowstorm is coming. We're in the midst of a pandemic. Everyone's spacing out. Never, no one knows what to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. people don't want to be wearing masks, whatever it is. So it's like trying to remember all those things because it's like, I tried. I swear I did. Oh, <laughs> I will 100%. I'll just be like doing the dishes. And then I'll think about uh, a conversation or like a tift uh -huh. that I got in with a friend six months before. And I'll be like, oh, <laughs> why did we have to have a lack of communication? <laughs> and even if like they were the one who was wrong, I'll yeah. be like, but what could I have done differently? Uh -huh. What's it oh. going to be like when we see each other again? I'm convinced you know. everyone throughout my life has remembered the one stupid thing I did, the one wrong thing I said, the one bad, yeah. something that's negative. I'm convinced because I feel like I don't necessarily have it in the front of my mind, but every once in a while I'll be like, oh, remember when I did that? And then I'll be like, oh my God, I bet you they remember that. What if that's your only memory of me? And like, <laughs> just have... but this is, this is, Silly. this is that what's very similar about you and I mm -hmm. and it's also what makes us very interesting <laughs> friends <laughs> because we have the exact same processing slash insecurity yeah so when you and I think that there's an issue yes we're both like very paranoid that the other's <laughs> not telling the truth yes like let's just get this out is this what's happening no oh, oh okay we, yeah we totally <laughs> So if Jen and I think that there's like a miscommunication, Jen, yeah. like I, by the way, I've never had a friend like this. I think I mentioned this last time. I've never had a friend like this where like <laughs> Jen thinks friendly. that there may be like some, not even, we've never had a fight. She no. thinks that there may be something to discuss. Yeah. And then she'll be like, Hey, can we talk about this? Yeah. And it kind of makes it sound like I've, I've had like really shitty friends. <laughs> no, I've always been the person that's been like, hey, can we talk about this? Yeah. So I have like another version of me in that respect. <laughs> and it is so weird. Because <laughs> it normally spikes your anxiety. It does. Whenever she's like, hey, can we, can we do real talk for a minute? And I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> and I go, um... Really? And then really? she says, I'm not mad. And right. then I think she's mad. <laughs> like, let's let's drop all, take a breath. There's no need to be I worried. <laughs> and then and then like we'll have our little chat. It's it's always about the podcast, always. Yeah. <laughs> and never about our friendship, always about the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll finish up. Yeah. And I'll be like, but can I trust you to come to me <laughs> if you have an issue? <laughs> Which is exactly the whole premise of her coming to me is to yeah. ask if there's something we need to discuss. And she's like, yeah. has this whole conversation <laughs> not just made you aware that I am doing that exact thing? <laughs> it's what we do. We talk it out. 
We do. Oh my you gosh, gotta you're talk such it a out. good friend. <laughs> and then my mom, talk about paranoid. Oh my God, Mama like, Terry. She's always like, I hope you're being just as good of a friend to her because you do not want to lose a person like her. I love Jennifer. <laughs> I love Mama Terry. She did the same thing. This is how you know that you're a good friend. <laughs> Because she did the exact same thing with Michael. Mm-hmm. She's like, you better be good to him. I don't want to see him disappear. So you're basically the second love of my life. Ooh, wow. I mean, <laughs> that is, is a huge. Lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure, but I'm going to try my best to be the best I can be for oh you. My gosh. Well, apparently you're too good for me, according to my mom. <laughs> you and him both are. <laughs> I love it. But see, we have gratitude for each other. Mm-hmm. It's all about gratitude. We do. Yeah. And I have gratitude for my anxiety meds, which I feel like I <laughs> mention every single episode. But I do think about that. Like, yeah, it's it should seem like, yeah, like I'm obsessing about it. But take, keep in mind, for the past six years, well, I've been off them since 2012, so a little longer. Mm-hmm. I was under the impression that I couldn't take them because I'd make my migraines worse. Mm -hmm. So I kind of forgot what life was like off of them. Yeah. And then, you know, so I've had like pretty big anxiety the past year. And to see how much happier I can be is like mind blowing to me. Like I cannot believe that life can be so good because of one pill. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is something that I been grateful for yeah like this chemical imbalance that I have in my brain much like if your liver had an issue my yep. brain has an issue and it has since I was young mm-hmm. you know like nature versus nurture I think it was a little bit of both for me yeah um and I'm so grateful that like I guess I never thought I could be this happy yeah I I said and that. I think that's amazing and awesome and I think there's such a stigma a tie tied to why can't I speak tonight there's a stigma a tied <clears throat> there's such a stigma tied to medication and therapy and all of it and I at 19 did not have a good experience with medication mm-hmm. but I absolutely know I also had bad doctors so yeah. I don't go I will never go to therapy again, or I will never be on medication again, because you know what? If I got to that place, I absolutely would. There is no question in my mind. And I feel like between the stigma or people having one bad experience and going, oh, please, you don't want to go go down that road. No, people, it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And therapy and talking or medication or a combination of the two are so important and can just change a person's life in a huge way. And I think people, I, I, I'm i still surprised by the stigma it has, even though I shouldn't be, because considering a lot of other things people <laughs> haven't really accepted in the past life, four but, years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just think it's so important and it's good that you can talk about it and you're not obsessing over it and people should know someone having a good experience on it because I do think people downplay it or you know say talk more about the negative than the positive and Mm -hmm. I think it's important for people to hear the positive with it I appreciate that I've I've always kind of ever since I started social media I've always made it a kind of promise to myself that I want to come off exactly how I am on social media as I am on real life and Mm -hmm. not all that smoke and mirrors of, you know, fake. Mm -hmm. And this is my reality. And my reality is that my life is completely different now Mm -hmm. as far as how I see the world. And that is combined with, you know, I do go to therapy now Mm -hmm. and, you know, like the gratitude journal and I I take better care of myself, you know, like, the whole self-care aspect, I feel like maybe it's like an American thing. I don't know. People mm-hmm. who are not American are going to have to tell me. I feel like we we set ourselves like we're such a low priority. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I can, you and I can speak for moms. Mm-hmm. We're such a low priority. We break promises to ourselves. We're the first one we break promises to. Oh, yeah. We're the last one we take care of. We're the last one we check up on. We're like, how are we doing? Mm -hmm. And ever since I started putting myself higher up, Mm -hmm. I'm happier. Yeah. And I just, 
I just wish that we would all feel less guilt and less yes. shame mm-hmm. about putting ourselves first. Yes. I agree. A thousand percent. And I do think it's You, you agree? American. Does that mean you're going to do it? <laughs> Does that mean I'll do it right now? Um, no. Uh, no, I, I, I'm trying. I think I'm trying. You took a bath last week. I did. That was exciting. I'm so I, proud of you. I cut my hair. Um, you, and you got your uh, hair done. Right. I, and I'm, well, I did it a couple of times so far, but I'm trying to read more mm-hmm. and just like go back to that and less of like the filler noise and try to actually, so I'm trying, I'm trying to get You there. are. You're because trying more than I've ever seen. Thanks. But I also think it's because I realized that I am someone, it takes a lot for me to get like mad. Like it, it's, it's not something that happens easily. It also took a lot for me to get stressed out. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm not someone who stressed easily. I, I could kind of just roll with the punches or whatever. And I think actually since becoming a mom, that helped me, which is weird, but like it helped me roll with the punches more. Yeah. But I think, and from what I've read about Hashimoto's and all of that, that even if I don't feel like I'm stressed out, but maybe I'm doing a lot or there's a lot going on, it is now taking more of a toll because kind of the same way gluten messes with you because of Hashimoto's because it tricks your body and tricks your thyroid and does all these crazy things. Stress does the same thing. And so I'm way more aware of trying to not get stressed out, even though, which is hard for me because it did take a lot and because I wasn't easily stressed out, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, even with the kids, (laughs) my husband will say that, um, the, the patients I had when I was working and my commute was about two hours each way a day. And the patients I had to sit through that commute transferred over to the kids once they were born. And that's like how that worked. But then my lack of stress went to red lights and I just can't deal with red lights. I can't deal Mm -hmm. with hitting every red light from here to five minutes to target. Like, come on. Oh yeah. Slow cars who are like barely. uh, What are you doing? What's everyone doing out? What are you doing? Get off your phone. Yes, I can't. Stop changing music. But I also know that as the kids get older, as we're doing more, now we're in pandemic world. And now I'm, you know, keeping up with, what my first grader is doing with distance learning and making sure all his stuff is mm-hmm. turned in mm-hmm. while also trying to like homeschool the, what would have been nursery schooler now and making sure they're okay and all that. I am sure it is taking a toll on me more than I realize. So I'm also trying to be more aware of that, that maybe, oh, I need to like step back or I need to find some more time or I need to change up the day a little bit so that things don't get too crazy or whatever it is. No, and that's, that making sense. No, that makes total <laughs> sense. Your body, like even though mentally you're like, I'm okay. I have a high yeah. threshold. Physically, your body's like, uh, you think. <laughs> you don't. And you're also getting older. So welcome to that. <laughs> yeah. We're telling you something different. You need to sit down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Break. Yeah. It's, it's annoying, but enlightening at the same time. So no, that. like I, I had a back spasm for the first time yesterday and uh-huh. it was in Target and I'm like, what is happening? Uh huh. Is this, is this my thirties now? Are we just <laughs> going to have back sp- spasms for no reason? Like, yeah, I'd have Michael roll out my back and I'm like, this is, this is not okay. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're someone who's listening and you're like, I do not have the time to make time for myself. Uh-huh. Um, first of all, I'm not here to give you advice. Yeah. <laughs> I am home most of the time. Yeah. Like I realize that the amount of free time I have to someone who works full time is completely different. Yeah. Um, but if I might make a dis- you know, suggestion that yeah. you do or do not follow, um, and it's the hardest thing for everyone, including me for the longest time, um, not going to bed, but getting in bed earlier. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to sleep, yeah. but just getting in bed yeah. 
makes such a huge difference. Yeah. Because you're starting to wind down. Mm -hmm. I will get in bed. I'll do my little Duolingo Spanish (laughs) app. I'll write in my gratitude journal. I'll write in my planner for the next day of everything I have Mm -hmm. to do. I'll watch Netflix. I'll play games. I might not go to bed for a couple hours, but the act of actually just getting in bed, it's like Mm -hmm. my time. Yeah. I feel like it's a form of self-care. I'll put on some hand lotion, like Mm -hmm. a little old lady. Um, (laughs) And it's better than feeling like I need to be doing for others. Yes. Out of bed. Yes. You know? Yep. So maybe just get in bed a half hour early tonight, 20 minutes early. Yep. Just do whatever you want. Because I think it's so easy. And especially as parents where that nighttime time feels like, it's yours. <sighs> it's yeah. mine. So I have to stay up and do all the things I've been wanting to do all day, even oh, though sure. I am exhausted. And it's like, no, you don't. You don't have to do all that. And me and my husband have had this talk and like, and, and in recent weeks where we're going to start like trying to keep each other in check, whether it's with making sure we're working out more or we're eating better, or we're just getting that time of going to sleep earlier or working on creative projects more where that's making us happy, like a little side hobby or reading or whatever it is, because there is time in our day. We just have conditioned ourselves that there's not, well, we have no time. Yes, we do. We just have to use our time better. And I think, you know, especially in quarantine, we all got used to just laying around as much as possible and getting into sweats and just being tired at the end of the day, or then you are just watching whatever TV or scrolling on your phone. It's like, okay, well, instead of doing that, I could be taking a bath. I could be working out. I could be reading a book. I could be doing something else that there's all this filler time happening until what, 11 o'clock or 12 at night? What am I Mm -hmm. doing? I've literally done nothing (laughs) for five hours. Like, No, it's so true. Yeah. Well, and even like my therapist, she was even like, cause I, I was telling her, I'm like, I find it very hard to stay still. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm sitting on the couch, I feel like I should be doing something, whether yeah. that's working or playing a game or do like doing a chore or a project. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, my parents would hear that and be like, um, what you watch the little mermaid on repeat, like <laughs> every day and never <laughs> left the couch. But I don't know. It's just a thing. And she's like, well, you know, maybe you can time block self-care mm-hmm. Yes, and that doesn't have to be taking a bath. That could be doing your nails or mm-hmm. doing your hair or your makeup or whatever. So if you're someone that can't sit still, you know, self-care doesn't have to be about sitting still. It could yeah. be a productive thing like your nails or yeah. I don't know, shaving your legs or whatever. Yeah. Um, I hate <laughs> shaving my legs, by the way. I hate shaving my legs and it's winter and I'm like, whatever. No <laughs> one does it. not get time very much. So yeah, yeah. it's like, whatever. It's extra <laughs> warmth. Um, but that was really interesting. I never thought to time block self-care. Yeah. It's like, wait, so I'm setting aside time for me. Right. No. Right. That doesn't happen. Yeah, but it's true. And it's like, we're scheduling everything else in our day. Right. We might as well keep that going because it's like, okay, let's say that first hour after your kids go to bed, it's like, why don't you use just that hour? Be like, this is my hour. Right. I can either work out. I can do something creative. I can take a bath. I can shave my legs. I can do my nails, whatever it is, but that's my time. Maybe I can do three of those things in that time, whatever, like, but that's the time. And if that time goes longer, so be it. Right. But at least I know I have this block of time. I and agree. Like, yeah. And what you kind of saying that it just like got my mind thinking like you and I, since we had kids have more or less done our stuff from home. Like, yeah, I work from home. Yeah. The jobs that you've had have been from home. Yeah. My question for those listening is if you were working out of the house before the pandemic and now you work from home. Do you find that you get more time for yourself Mm -hmm. now that you work from home? Like, do you have the time to like quick put in a load of laundry or do a quick chore? Or do you feel like you're still glued to the computer like you would be at work or doing Mm -hmm. like meetings and stuff? Like, has the pandemic changed how you care for yourself because of your work situation changing? I think, I mean, I don't know, obviously. So this is not speaking for anyone and I would love to hear people's feedback. Um, there are some I know 
that I think it actually made it harder by working from home and kind of similar to, like I've said, my husband has always worked from home. So Mm -hmm. the pandemic didn't change that, but for a long time, he had to get out of the mindset of I'm home. I should be working whatever time of day that is, or, Oh, maybe I should get on early because of this, or maybe I should stay on late or even taking time off of work, but we're not going on vacation anymore. So what if I'm home, shouldn't I be working? You know, all of that. I think people that were in an office now got uprooted. I think some of those people are feeling that way now of like, but I'm home. I need to be working. Or now people just think I'm completely flexible because of, I think technology has just ruined, you know, the nine to five idea at this point. I, (laughs) years ago, we, um, my great uncle used to work for Ogilvy and Mather. Um, like wait, he's been retired since 1984. He'll actually be a hundred years old in oh April. God. Yeah. So, but he is like the most amazing storyteller and he, I, I like love listening to all his stories. And I remember being to, out to dinner with him like years ago and talking about work and, you know, the idea that people aren't promoted because they did a good job but that you have to then like apply for a higher position and then like fight it out. And then maybe you get a raise. Maybe it's a small increase. He's like, he doesn't understand. Or the fact that like at five o'clock work doesn't stop because now you have a Blackberry, an iPhone, a computer, all these ways Mm -hmm. that people just reach out. And it's hard because if you reply, oh good, now I can keep doing this. You're available then. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's like trying to train yourself to not seem available after work hours. And that's so hard to do. Um, and yeah, that would, he's like, so, but you can just be reached at any time where for him, his day ended at five, he went and got a drink and he went home. That's, <laughs> you know, it. Like it yeah. just, that's it for work. And it's so hard to do that now because everyone's just available all the time. And you're also like being judged like, oh, you posted to social media, but you didn't see my email. You know, like it's like, like you're too so accessible. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. and that's also just like the work from home beast is that yes. the pro is that the hours are flexible. Uh huh. The con is that the hours are flexible. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So you can get your hours in and your work done whenever. Yep. But then you're always available. Exactly. And, you know, I, I do, I kind of, what do my little side gig of content Mm -hmm. marketing and I have had to set different boundaries Mm -hmm. which I feel like I do good at and then I don't do good at you know it's like it just kind of comes and goes but I've been okay it's like no I don't have to get to this yeah until Mm -hmm. tomorrow right because I've gotten stuff off of my to-do list that I planned for yep and the rest can wait till then exactly and it's so weird it's such a guilty feeling like yes but this will only take me for no, mm-hmm. it can wait till tomorrow. It's such a weird thing to like, have to put up your own roadblocks. Cause it feels like, like, cause my mom even pointed out, she's like, cause I'm like, Oh, I got up really early and got all my stuff done. She's like, no, you didn't. Uh-huh. You got up early. So you got, so you can get more work done throughout the day. Yes. I'm like, Oh, shade. Yeah. <laughs> Momentary nose. Don't try and get anything by her. Oh, it's like looking in a mirror with <laughs> my mom. <laughs> They're just like, mm, nope, got you. No, sorry. Sorry, That's called you out. No. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of mentioned how like it's probably gotten worse for some people working from mm. home. And, you know, definitely, I guess the ones who can't put their kids in daycare. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because yes. then you're doing it all. Yep. Um, the people I was thinking of, you know, they either don't have kids or yeah. their kids still go to daycare. And it's like, yeah. yeah wear my pajamas I can get some laundry done I can do this and that but it's like if you have your kids and it's like Mm -hmm. I'm working with a toddler on my lap it's like yeah oh my gosh it's madness um I will say I have an attitude of gratitude for this podcast I do too yeah I um am very thankful we are like a month shy less than a month shy of one year of doing this podcast oh my gosh right I mean, you wrote that today, but it didn't yeah. really hit me. You're right. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. I feel like that episode has to be special. <laughs> we have to. We have to make it big. But uh, I am grateful that, one, a little ride on the Haunted Mansion 
has led us here. I know. Two, we have had people from the Disney community. Mm -hmm. And then we have had people that I never would have imagined being able to talk to. I don't want to drop names because I don't want, but (laughs) never would have imagined being able to talk to. And also people that maybe I was unaware of that got to meet and was like, oh my God, how have I not known about you before? And I just think all of that is so cool that this open door is for me just to learn more and grow more and all that good stuff. We've had such a plethora of guests and that's the best thing about the podcast is I was talking to, we were talking about like, you know, the direction we want the podcast to go. And one of the things I really love about it is that we can have who we want on this Mm -hmm. podcast. We're not limited, you know, like it's a magical mommy podcast, but we're the mommies and we're the magic. (laughs) Like, you know, we can have who we want. And I, I I love that. Like we can Mm -hmm. bring interesting guests for you. We can bring interesting guests that, you know, we want, I, I don't, feel like you summed this up way better than I did. And I'm just, going at this <laughs> no, point. <you're> <laughs> no, I'm just, it just makes me excited every time I think about the guests that we've had. Mm-hmm. And I get really happy when I think that I've had the pleasure of talking to them with you. Yes, absolutely. And that we get to see each other virtually so often makes me happy. You know, every week. And if you only knew the guests that we have coming up for you. <laughs> so excited. Mm-hmm. Well, this sounds like a good place to end. <laughs> I'm running out of words and adjectives. Yeah, that but. works. But hey, why doesn't everyone that's listening now comment on social media, email us, whatever, Tell us what you are grateful for and what your attitude of gratitude is all about. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. We will put out a tweet. Yes. And you can just reply below. Yeah. We'll do that. I love it. All right. Well, if you liked this episode, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We will have all of those linked below. I hope you're having a great day, night, whatever you're doing, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.